How are tokens valued? Do we value them the same way we value stocks? Now, the first thing you're going to say is absolutely not. Stocks are valued based on discounted cash flows, how much revenue they generate, how much profit they make in those revenues. That's what matters when it comes to valuing a stock. But I can tell you that's not really true. Amazon didn't make a profit for almost 20 years. Zero. And guess what? It was valued more than zero. Now, tokens don't have cash flows, with the exceptions of a few DeFi applications, but there are other metrics we can track. Things like blockchain usage, so uh, the transaction count, the operation count. But the thing is, if you look at Blocktivity.com, which tracks operations and for WAX transactions, you'll see that the top five blockchains, as measured by operations, are not the top five market cap tokens. What about other metrics? Uh, how about the value of the community? No, not really. If you look at the biggest Telegram communities, you'll see that some highly valued tokens have relatively high numbers of Telegram members, but it's not consistent across the board. What about a metric that is near and dear to my heart? The amount of effort that a blockchain team puts into software development. Well, to debunk that one, all you have to do is look at Litecoin. Essentially, no new development in over a year, but it's still a top 10 token by market cap. Thing is, we all want to believe that metrics and effort and even cash flows correspond to token prices and stock prices, but they don't, at least not directly and rarely in the short term. So now you're thinking if stocks are not valued based on cash flows and tokens are not valued based on usage metrics, then how are these things valued? Well, there's one thing that matters more than anything else when it comes to token and stock prices, and that's the outlook. What do people expect to happen in the future? And how has their outlook changed? And you will know when people's outlook changes. These other things, the metrics, whether they be revenues, transactions, product development work, they matter, but they're actually insignificant in the short term compared to people's outlook. And by the way, outlook has a name when it comes to stocks. It's called the multiple. The multiple is a number you multiply the revenues of the company by or the profit by to figure out the value of the company or, or its market cap. So let's say your company has 10 million in annual revenues, your stock trades at a 10x revenue multiple, then your company is worth 10 million times 10, $100 million. It's got a $100 million market cap. Now, tokens don't have multiples yet because they don't have revenues or profits, but people do have an outlook, good or bad, about the tokens they hold. Let's examine what happens when there's been a change in the outlook for a token. And for that, I'd like to take a look at Ethereum. So, in January 2018, Ether was priced at $1,300. Today, it's worth $150. That's a 90% drop. The market cap of Ethereum has gone from $130 billion in January 2018 to $16 billion today, in the end of 2019. Wow! So what's been going on with Ethereum's metrics during that time? Well, since January 2018, about two years ago, Ethereum network has gone through a ton of software development. It's had the Constantinople hard fork, the St. Petersburg hard fork, the Istanbul fork, and now Ethereum 2.0, the beacon chain, which is shifting Ethereum from a proof of work to proof of stake chain. These are all positive developments. How about Ethereum accounts? Well, there were 18 million accounts or addresses in January 2018. There's over 80 million today, the end of 2019. DApps? That number's way up. There are about 800 dApps in January 2018. Ethereum now is about 2,800 dApps in two years later. Transactions, those have declined. They've gone from about a million a day in January 2018 to about 750,000 a day here in December 2019. It's a drop, but not catastrophic. So the bottom line is Ethereum is much better, more robust, a better software platform than it was two years ago. DeFi, by the way, wasn't even a factor then. Now Ethereum is the DeFi leader but it's dropped 90% in value. And that makes no sense, right? And you might be thinking, well, this must be a phenomenon of blockchain and crypto. This wouldn't happen with the well-run stock market, right? 
Well, actually, it does happen with stocks. In fact, we see this phenomenon time and time again in the world of publicly traded stocks. Let's look at the second most valuable company in the world in the year 2000. Its market cap was $550 billion. I'm talking about Cisco. The only company in the world worth more than Cisco at the time was Microsoft. What did Cisco look like in the year 2000? Well, it had $21 billion of revenue. It had $3 billion in net income. And with a market cap of $550 billion, Cisco was trading at 26 times its annual revenue, a 26 times revenue multiple. It was trading at 184 times its net income, 184 net income multiple. Crazy, right? I mean, that, that crazy requires, by the way, crazy future growth. So what happened to Cisco in the past 19 years? Cisco's revenues, 19 years later, today, is $50 billion, two times higher than it was in the year 2000. Cisco's net income today is $12 billion. That's four times higher than it was in the year 2000. What's Cisco's market cap today, 19 years later, after all that growth? It's $190 billion. You're thinking, what? That's right. Cisco's lost 60% of its value when everything it has done has gone up. How can Cisco have lost $350 billion of market cap after it's more than doubled its revenues and quadrupled its net income? Well, because people were expecting something better. The financial world cares about growth. They thought Cisco was going to continue to grow at ridiculous rates pretty much forever. And then that rosy outlook changed. And the financial world decided that for the more robust growth that Cisco was going to deliver going forward, 190 billion market cap was appropriate. So that $550 billion that Cisco was worth in the year 2000, in retrospect, was considered a mistake. So what does this mean for Ethereum? It means, obviously, it was overvalued back in 2017. And Ether back then was propelled up by the explosion of ICO activity. People's outlook was crazy optimistic. When that ICO frenzy slowed, people's outlook changed. Now, Ether is still up from its original price of 25 cents, but it's not getting back to that $1,000 per Ether anytime soon. It's going to take a change in outlook, another giant unexpected event to drive the price of Ether up from where it is here now. Frankly, I think that event could be DeFi, but since we all know about DeFi, it's not unexpected. So Ethereum becoming the DeFi platform of choice is not enough to drive the price of Ether dramatically higher. It will take an explosion of DeFi applications far greater than anyone's current outlook to cause the price of Ether to pop. And don't forget that point. For Ether to do really well again, something has to happen that's unexpected. Now, I'll be doing another video on this very simple but important point. To really do well in cryptos and stocks, you have to have an outlook that no one else expects. Until then, if you like what you heard today, hit subscribe below, and I'll see you next time.